And first of all, I'd like to uh, express my gratitude to Kerala Pharmaceuticals, uh, Madam Neelam, Dr. Masi, and the entire team of Kerala Pharmaceuticals for giving me this invitation for this very important meeting, the IAMICO in 2014. And uh, in fact, in his introductory speech, our Honorable Ch uh, Chairperson has already summarized the entire talk. That's what I was telling Sir. So let me quickly just go through these slides. So the topic given to me today was uh, to talk something on cardiovascular risk management, the challenges and the solutions. Especially what... So uh, we shall be, I shall just be briefly touching upon the changing epidemiology, the early detection of risk factors, the control of risk factors, and the implementation of the various guidelines and a very important and recent, I mean, uh, it's not very recent, but it's very pertinent to uh, Asian Indians and the developing countries, the concept of the polypill. So, uh, if we see the uh, epidemiology of non-communicable diseases, this has really increased. If we see from 1970, 2000, and a projected rate till 2030, this has increased from 36% to 63% and which is projected to rise to 76% almost uh, till 2030. So this is definitely a cause for uh, worry. And if you see the cause of death in India, uh, the non-communicable diseases 53%, that's across the 50% mark. And out of these cardiovascular diseases is, uh, causes the maximum death. And so, uh, what are the factors that increase the cardiovascular disease in India? Basically, urbanization, people coming from rural areas looking for better life. So, increase in stress levels, reduce physical activity, and changing dietary pattern, and most of all, the improved life expectancy. So, we tend to get more people with heart disease. And most importantly here, I want to emphasize is that the earlier onset of disease. And if you see in Indians, there's a concept of coronary artery disease in young. This was a definition given by Anas Anas, where uh, he defined young as less than 40 years of age. So we have onset of coronary artery disease almost 6 to 10 years earlier than the Western population. So this is a uh, worrisome uh, problem. And if you see the uh, cardiovascular risk factors, there seem to be a clustering in the Asian Indian population. By clustering, we mean uh, you have a young or middle-aged person who is hypertensive, who is dyslipidemic. And dyslipidemic characteristically having a low HDL, then a high triglyceride, raised LDL cholesterol. And uh, he may be a diabetic, he may be a smoker. So there's a clustering of the risk factors which increases the cardiovascular disease risk. Cardiometabolic syndrome is another uh, problem in our, uh, especially Asian Indians. So if you see the uh, Comparison with men and women, starting from age 20 to more than 60, uh, there's a very high prevalence of the cardiometabolic uh, syndrome markers. Especially the risk factors is very important. Family history, especially history of coronary artery disease in young. Uh, family history that is either the father who's aged <coughs> less than 55 or mother less than 65 having CAD. That qualifies to be a strong positive family history or in uh, any of the first degree relatives. So that is very important and it is one of the major risk factors for CAD in India. And as I said, we should calculate the BMI. Rather than the BMI, the waist circumference is more important or a waist to hip ratio. I will not be going into details. And blood pressure screening and obviously the lipid profile screening. Also, we should stress on the food habits, uh, avoidance of smoking, limitation of alcohol, and other lifestyle behaviors. So how do we control? I mean, what is the status of the control of the risk factors? Despite visiting the doctor regularly, we see that the hypertensive patients, they, are, uh, they do not receive adequate doses uh, to achieve a good control of blood pressure. And this is worrying. And we have a lot of guidelines that recently the uh, 2013 guidelines for uh, cholesterol guidelines and here again the uh, lower limit, uh, the limit of LDL which was there before, uh, that was abolished 
and the new concept of either using a moderate intensity stepping therapy or a high intensity stepping therapy depending on the indications. So by high intensity it means you should lower the LDL by more than 50% of the baseline. Whatever is the baseline, anything more than 50% reduction means a high intensity and uh, stepping therapy. So usually uh, we need to start high intensity statins in those who have clinical atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or those people or patients who have a LVLC of more than 190. And moderate intensity in diabetic individuals without overt cardiovascular disease. And uh, even those in the age group of 40 to 75 with LVL between 70 to 189. What about aspirin? And it is it is established beyond doubt that aspirin therapy 75 to 162 milligram is very, very important for primary prevention. Even in patients with ischemic stroke who cannot take oral anticoagulation, aspirin up to 325 milligram has a class 1 level of A evidence. <coughs> and other risk reduction uh, strategies for patients with uh, coronary artery disease includes antihypertensive as indicated antiplatelets and statins. Even the 2013 uh, ESC guidelines, they have focused on a concept of the polypin, which is a fixed dose combination of several antihypertensive with a statin and a low dose aspirin, with the rationale that the hypertensive patients often present with dyslipidemia and may have high cardiovascular risk. And what they thought was this was the European guidelines. This formulation could conveniently reduce multiple risk factors. And compliance is a very important issue because if we uh, recap our treatment of uh, patients with coronary artery disease, four group of medications are very important. Uh, antiplatelets, statins, beta blockers, and ACE inhibitors. So number of uh, drugs in your prescription definitely increases. If you see a prescription written by a cardiologist, at least there will be 9 to 10 drugs in that prescription and patients tend to lose interest. So there was one study to see the compliance of these patients, the premier study, and it was found that one third of patients discontinued treatment within one month and that was, this was really worrisome. And there was another study, the pure study, where the uh, patients who had cardiovascular disease but uh, did not really receive adequate uh, therapy. So uh, this is a recent trial, the umpire trial, where they studied the fixed dose combination strategy on the adherence or the compliance of these patients. And it was found that the compliance increased threefolds. If we prescribe the medicines separately and instead, uh, or give them in a single load, I mean uh, combination pill, then the compliance increases. And uh, we all know that in non-compliant patients, the outcomes definitely poor than those who are compliant. And MI risk uh, definitely increases by several times when all the risk factors are added together. That means a person not taking any medications or any lifestyle modification is at higher risk of suffering a myocardial infarction. So the polypill concept, uh, this is this has been marketed by uh, Catalog Pharmaceuticals in the form of polycap. And this contains a combination of semvastatin 20 mg, Ramipril 5, Etinolol 50, Hydrochlor 12.5, and Aspirin 100 mg. And the Indian polycap study where uh, it has shown that it, polycap does reduce multiple risk factors with improved compliance. So most importantly, indicap, we definitely expect to increase the compliance of patients, for, especially for secondary prevention. And there was favorable effects shown in lipid reduction, as well as blood pressure control, and reduction of coronary heart disease and stroke. So what are the benefits of the polypill? It has shown significant cardiovascular risk reduction, number one. And most importantly, it improves the adherence and the compliance of therapy. It has reduced side effects because we are using combination of low doses 
of several medications. And obviously it is cost saving. If you buy five medicines separately, instead of buying a single uh, medication with five uh, components, that will become cheaper. So who are the potential uh, patients who can benefit from the polypin? So patients with established cardiovascular disease, heart disease or stroke, who are hypertensive or non-hypertensive and with or without dyslipidemia. And patients with hypertension and dyslipidemia. So a large number of patients can benefit from the polypin. So to summarize, coronary heart disease and stroke are the biggest killers. Hypertension and dyslipidemia are the major risk factors. And early and effective, early recognition and effective control of risk factors is very important. And the new guidelines do recommend polypin for effective control of multiple risk factors. And polycap may be an effective and well tolerated solution for the changing epidemiology. Before ending, I just want to show this slide the mnemonics of A, B, C, D, E for prevention of heart disease A for aspirin, B for beta blocker and blood pressure. C for cholesterol and cigarettes, diet and diabetes, and E for education and exercise. Thank you.